There is barely a cloud in the sky as Gary Rotieri works the rows on his Foxdale farm with a GPS controlled tractor hauling a bed renovator. It's April in the Proserpine district at the end of a moderate wet season on the Whitsunday coast and farmers are getting to work preparing blocks for early season planting. This is controlled traffic farming in operation. Gary's tractor is on auto steer the wheels tracking the interrow spacing with an accuracy of just a few centimetres. Growing sugarcane in the 21st century is a precision business. Maximising productivity and minimising impact on the environment means applying the latest technology to every aspect of the farming operation. And in a region dependent on irrigation to supplement natural rainfall events, this fourth generation cane farmer is eager to see how new technology can improve his water use efficiency. Most of our irrigation was set up well, many moons ago with my grandfather. Um, the infrastructure is not as big as I'd like it, so the cost for pumping that with the power is, yeah, sometimes it gets a bit astronomical. So we've got to try and do it smarter, more efficient, and um, make the most of what we've got to replace that infrastructure is just too costly at the moment. I've got 167 hectares all up between myself and my father. Um, it's three separate farms all joined together. We're lucky enough to have a bit of a recycling dam in the middle. We catch, I think it's roughly about 135 hectares of our farm. Goes back into there, which we're able to re-irrigate from. Well, here we have, we have six irrigation pumps. I have two on the Proserpine River. I've got two bores and I've got two on the recycling dam. Probably about 70% of the farm I can furrow irrigate. The rest of it I've got to use a water winch. Today, Gary is with Cane Growers Proserpine Extension Officer, Christine Peterson. First up, it's a routine check on the new Davis weather station, which is giving growers in the Foxdale district a more accurate picture of their local weather. It measures weather essentials like rainfall, temperature and wind speed, uploading that information in real time that farmers can access on a computer or smartphone. Most valuable to farmers, the weather station measures evapotranspiration. It's a combination of surface evaporation and plant transpiration. Combine that with a crop factor and farmers can get an accurate picture of when it's time to irrigate. As part of the Rural Water Use Efficiency Irrigation Futures Project uh, here in Proserpine, we had to determine how to use a little bit of funding to uh, provide information uh, to as many growers as we could on how to better utilise um, information that's out there uh, to make irrigation practices more efficient. We decided to purchase a weather station uh, here to help us provide um, a little bit of rainfall data but mainly for the evapotranspiration data so that we can actually uh, provide information to growers so that they can use that to determine when to use their limited water or their limited infrastructure to put that water on. We've also uh, purchased a couple of soil probes to put in a paddock here. Locating the weather station close to where dozens of farmers are irrigating along the Proserpine River makes good sense. It's information farmers now have at their fingertips. It's got the full telemetry unit on it. It automatically sends that data uh, up to the cloud, if you like, so we can access it via the internet. We can also access it via our mobile phones with an app. So anybody can access that weather station and get up to date within two minutes information. Uh, they can get information of the highs and lows and totals for the day and for the month and for the year. Uh, the evapotranspiration is certainly uh, something that is very useful for scheduling of irrigation. It's a very important one um, to have multiple weather stations around. So we're hoping to put more around the district. Christine and Gary are searching for a soil moisture probe hidden within a crop that's almost ready to harvest. Neatly contained below ground in a PVC tube, the capacitance probe measures soil moisture by checking its level of conductivity. The unit is solar powered using a cell that rises above the canopy. It transmits its soil moisture data using a telemetry system, uploading it in real time to the internet. These will read uh, soil moisture um, at whatever depth we have a sensor at. So in this particular case we've got sensors at 10 centimetres, 30, 50 and then 70. This is essentially where the data comes to from that soil probe. Uh, we've got the option here of downloading, you know, if we wanted to bring a laptop or a tablet in here and that's certainly the way that we used to have to do it. Uh, these days of course we use telemetry so uh, this just gets 
phoned in if you like uh, and we can access this straight off the, off the website. Back in the office now, Christine and Gary begin sifting through the results. The combined weather station and soil probe data is giving Christine a very clear view of how Gary is managing his irrigation in combination with natural rainfall events. Those steps of the drawdown each day of the water is more pronounced. You've obviously had a little bit of rainfall back in here, so it's just topped it up and that's just, that's gold that is, because yeah. that's keeping that, that moisture level in the good zone. It's not too wet, yeah. but it's certainly not too dry. Uh, and you said you irrigated again here, did you? No, no, no. It's that's that's rain. rain again. Oh, you know that's you um. That's you could, free stuff. You couldn't order that if you tried. That's perfect. So you're back at the full point again. The soil moisture probe is also unlocking the secrets of how the cane is extracting moisture from the soil, at what rate, and where in the soil profile that's happening. We can actually look at that total soil moisture. Up in this blue area is is full. So the soil profile is full of water. Gary's crop, is, the soil's draining and Gary's crop started to, to utilise that water quite well. Uh, he's had a few showers of rain here and kicked it up. And so Gary now knows based on the amount of that rainfall and working out, um, knowing how much his crop uses, he's got a few extra days up his sleeve before he needs to, to start irrigation. Um, certainly he won't need to start irrigating here for, for a while now. Of course, up in, up in this other area here, the crop rooting activity or the crop roots are at 10 centimetres and 30. Uh, at this point in time, there's no extraction occurring at uh, 50 centimetres, but that's to be expected because there's plenty of moisture higher up in the profile. Um, we've also seen that at 70 centimetres throughout this entire, entire exercise, there's been no crop water use coming from the 70 centimetre mark. So that's just a function of, of the type of soil that it is with the heavy clay pan layer in there. Uh, so Gary, you know, has been aiming to irrigate in that top 30, 40 centimetre layer to get the best productivity out of that. Combining soil probe and evapotranspiration data has brought immediate changes to Gary's irrigation practices. What the results show is that the crop is getting too much water during some irrigation events, which is actually slowing the cane's growth. Yeah, we wouldn't have worked it out if we didn't have the probes in the paddock and the weather station. Um, with the probes there, we could work out how much the, the cane was taking out of the ground. And then we looked at what we we're putting on and how long it was staying waterlogged for. And by measuring the growth rates, um, sometimes we were watering it and it was staying stagnant for four or five days afterwards. It was that wet. Um, once we changed our practices, it was maybe a day that it had stopped growing and then it would just power on. Well, you're trying to keep your, your productivity in the maximum growth and your moisture just before saturation. Um, you don't want to stress it too much. But yeah, if you can keep it, keep it growing at, at the optimum all the time, that's, that's dollars in the bank. The change has been a simple one to introduce. 70% of the farm uses furrow irrigation. By pumping water into the furrows at a higher flow rate, more ground is covered faster with less penetration into the soil profile. These are the cups I used to run. And then from the results we got from the weather station and the soil probes, we decided that a higher flow, so uh, a quicker irrigation, more water sent down faster was a better option, prevent overwatering, wasting water. So I've gone from these to running a variety of these ones and these ones. Um, that's given me the ability to get around my farm quicker, watering the paddocks quicker and use less water, believe it or not. And now I can go from anywhere 24 hours to a run, I can get them down in 12 hours and have a bit of a lifestyle for a change. Saving time is a big benefit for this father of three. But using water more efficiently also means less pumping and therefore less electricity costs. Then there's the boost in productivity. All going to plan, smarter irrigation management should mean more tonnes destined for the mill. And that's money in the bank. I know that uh, Gary and his father are certainly very interested to see you know, what tonnage they do pull off of these blocks that they've been scheduling a, a little better with. Uh, the other thing, of course, is going to be working out the costs. So Gary, Gary's keeping a record of you know, when he irrigates uh, and they're keeping a very close eye on how much that electricity costs and their water costs as well. So you know, at the end of this season we will certainly be looking at the numbers and working out you know, how much extra tonnes, how much extra dollars they've actually achieved for those extra dollars they've put in. 
Having information at your fingertips on a smartphone is also taking the guesswork out of farming, helping to reinforce the intuition the Rotiri family has developed over generations. Without it, we probably wouldn't do half the stuff we do. Um, you know, we just keep going along with how our granddad used to do it. You know, we go and have a bit of a look, throw the water on. Um, most of the time, we were pretty close to being on the mark, but sometimes it just gives you that little bit of an edge, and it's nice to get a pat on the back and say you're doing it right.